This film is designed to guide the user through the installation and startup procedure for an Atlas Copco hydraulic breaker. Safety and general information. This film does not replace the operating manual in any way. It is important that you have read and understood the supplied operating manual before undertaking any of the actions shown in this film. Ensure that all relevant safety procedures and practices contained in the operating manual are followed by anyone working on or with the hydraulic attachment. Make sure the personal protective equipment complies with the applicable health and safety regulations. Always wear the following personal protective equipment. Protective helmet, safety glasses, protective gloves, protective shoes, warning vest, hearing protection. The operator and the assistant must agree on clear hand signals. Hydraulic attachments should only be mounted on carriers with sufficient load-bearing capacity. Always refer to the operating manual for the correct matching between carrier and attachment. The hydraulic breaker is delivered standard with spare parts list, operating manual, CE declaration of conformity, a test gauge for the lower wear bush and two cartridges of chisel paste for the Conti Lube 2. Working tool, connection hoses and the service box belong to the accessories and must be ordered according to the respective requirements. Hydraulic settings. At the next stage, we need to check the hydraulic flow, operating pressure and the relief valve settings of the auxiliary hydraulic circuit. Only use clean and undamaged connection hoses and fittings for this operation. Be sure to use hydraulic lines of the rated size and quality as set out in the operating manual. All connections should be made leak-free but without over-tightening the fittings. Attach a suitable flow meter to the connection hoses. The flow meter must be equipped with a flow control valve and a pressure gauge. Ensure that the blocking valves of the auxiliary hydraulic circuit are fully open. Start the engine and lower the gate lock lever. Choose the appropriate mode for the attachment and adjust the engine RPM if required. When the hydraulic oil is at normal operating temperature, the driver should activate the auxiliary hydraulic circuit by operating a foot pedal or a switch as required. When the auxiliary hydraulic circuit is activated, the assistant should adjust the flow control valve to increase the pressure. The pressure should be increased until the pressure relief valve of the auxiliary hydraulic circuit opens. If any adjustment is necessary, please proceed as detailed in the following steps. Reset the flow control valve to maximum flow before adjusting the pressure relief valve of the auxiliary hydraulic circuit. The pressure relief valve is usually located in the carrier machine's valve block. Refer to the carrier machine's service manual for the exact location. The assistant now adjusts the flow control valve until the correct operating pressure is indicated. At this stage, check the displayed value of the hydraulic flow in correspondence to the adjusted operating pressure. Refer to the operating manual for the correct operating pressure and oil flow of the respective attachment. The flow can usually be adjusted by simply increasing or decreasing the engine RPM or by selecting another operating mode via the carrier's computer system. Fitting the hydraulic breaker. When mounting hydraulic attachments to a carrier, keep in mind, sudden movements of the carrier may cause your assistant to be hit and injured by the boom or the attachment, so only move the boom very slowly and in a controlled manner while the assistant is within the danger zone. Do not touch any parts when the carrier is moving. Bores and fitting surfaces can act like a pair of scissors and cut off or hurt parts of your body, so never use your fingers to check bores or fitting surfaces. To mount the hydraulic attachment, carefully use the excavator arm to bring the adapter plate into position. The assistant should direct the movement of the excavator arm until it is flush with the hole pattern of the hydraulic attachment. To prevent corrosion, apply anti-seize grease to the threads of the mounting bolts and tighten the bolts crosswise to the recommended torque stated in the operating manual. 
check the connection threads of the hydraulic attachment and the corresponding hose fittings to ensure they are undamaged. Clean all fittings from sand or other foreign bodies before connecting the hoses. Before connecting or disconnecting the hydraulic attachment and before any maintenance work on the hydraulic components of the attachment or the carrier is carried out, be sure to depressurize the hydraulic system in accordance with the carrier's safety and operating manual. After properly mounting the hydraulic attachment to the carrier, make sure that the hydraulic hoses have the correct length. Carefully extend and retract the bucket cylinder all the way to the respective end position and ensure the hoses are not exposed to torsion or tensile loads. Fitting the working tool. Since the working tool is usually not installed when the breaker is delivered, it needs to be fitted before putting the hydraulic breaker into operation. To mount the tool, bring the hydraulic breaker into a horizontal position and place it on a firm and level surface. In order to prevent injuries caused by metal splinters, make sure to wear suitable protective equipment when fitting or removing a locking pin with a hammer. Remove the plugs from the breaker box using a screwdriver. To knock out the locking pin for the retainer bars, use the pin punch contained in the service box. The locking pin can only be removed in one direction. Take out the inner sealing plugs from the retainer bar slots of the percussion mechanism with the help of a screwdriver. Remove the retainer bars by turning the supplied M12 screw into the thread of the retainer bars and use the screw to pull them out. If the hydraulic breaker is equipped with a dust protector, it needs to be disassembled before the working tool can be installed. The dust protector is held in place by the two locking pins located at the lower end of the breaker box. Use the pin punch from the service box to knock out the pins. After removing the locking pins, Take out the complete bottom section of the dust protector, consisting of guide ring, floating ring and counter ring. Place it on a clean surface and remove the wiper from the base. Before installing the working tool, make sure to lubricate the wear bushings and the shaft of the working tool. Use the excavator arm to bring the working tool into a suitable position and apply chisel paste to the guide section of the shaft. After greasing the wear bushings, insert the tool with the help of the excavator arm. Following this, the retainer bars must be greased with chisel paste and then put back in place. Insert the inner sealing plugs into the retainer bar slots and drive the locking pin into place using the supplied pin punch and a hammer.
If the hydraulic breaker is equipped with a dust protector, reassemble it as follows. Push the wiper over the working tool and let it snap into the groove of the wiper base by means of slight hammer blows. Make sure the wiper is properly engaged along its full circumference. Push the complete bottom section of the dust protector that consists of guide ring, floating ring and counter ring over the working tool back into the mounting socket of the breaker box. When the apertures for the locking pins in the breaker box align with the recesses of the guide ring, drive the locking pins back into place using the pin punch and a hammer. After fitting the working tool and also, optionally, the dust protector, close the apertures in the breaker box with the sealing plugs. Lubrication. The automatic lubrication system Conti Lube 2 is directly attached to the breaker box. The self-bleeding system supplies the wear bushings and the working tool with chisel paste. To install a grease cartridge, remove the screw cap from the cartridge and ensure the foam seal around the screw thread is correctly positioned. Insert the cartridge into the bore provided in the Conti Lube 2 and screw the cartridge as far as it will go. The delivery rate of grease can be adjusted to better meet the application requirements. Loosen the counter nut and turn the metering screw clockwise to decrease the delivery rate of grease. Turning the metering screw anti-clockwise will increase the delivery rate. Emergency lubrication with a manual grease gun is also possible via the Conti Lube 2. For manual lubrication, stand the hydraulic breaker upright on the working tool and apply contact pressure. Connect the manual grease gun to the grease nipple on the side of the Conti Lube 2 and inject chisel paste. Remember to lubricate the hydraulic breaker every two hours when using a manual grease gun. Checking the piston accumulator and adjusting the gas pressure. The gas pressure in the piston accumulator should be checked and if necessary adjusted before putting the hydraulic breaker into operation. Refer to the operating manual for the correct gas pressure of the respective breaker model. Loosen the four mounting bolts and remove the cover from the service window. Unscrew the sealing plug from the filling valve. Take the pressure gauge from the service box and connect it to the filling hose. Push the free end of the filling hose into the filling valve and check the pressure on the gauge. If the value measured is equal to or less than the minimum gas pressure stated in the operating manual, the piston accumulator must be filled with nitrogen to the required level. Connect the filling hose to the nitrogen cylinder supplied in the service box. Push the free end of the filling hose into the filling valve. After opening the main valve of the nitrogen cylinder, slowly open the pressure relief valve and let the nitrogen flow into the piston accumulator. Check the pressure increase from the pressure gauge. Close the valve and disconnect the nitrogen cylinder when the piston accumulator has reached the required pressure, plus around 10%. 
recheck the filling pressure of the piston accumulator, and if required, let gas escape by pushing the free end of the filling hose repeatedly into the filling valve until the required gas pressure has been reached. Install the sealing plug back into the filling valve and tighten it. Put the service window cover back in place and tighten the four mounting bolts.